so much. And uh, I'm Dr. Jino An, the orthopedic spine surgeon in Nanami Spine and Joint Clinic with South German Hospital in Dubai. I'm so honored to present this topic in this great webinar and a little afraid. Uh, after hear from the Dr. Choi, Dae Jung Choi, uh, I'm a little scared to hear about many complications of the surgery with endoscopic, the best and UV that is the same techniques, but uh, my topic is a little writer subject, and I want to uh, I want to encourage the beginners uh, without any serious complications. But I want to uh, talk about the the you know the possibility and expandability of the UV surgery techniques. So maybe it's just my experience of the UV surgery. The, my question is maybe for the beginners. Sorry, for the beginners, uh, the, uh, we have uh, many questions. But in the endoscopic surgery, is it possible to treat all kind of the hernia disc, rumba disc disease with uh, UV techniques? And you guys in here know the answer of these questions. But beginners thought many. You know, complications or some handicap, some difficulty because of they don't know about the endoscopic surgery. What is the difference endoscopic and microscopic? So I want to tell about this one. The answer is absolutely less. Yes, this is my experience. The conclusion of this topic is UV can solve all these diseases in Rumba region, including simple and complex up and down migration sequestration, foraminal, and expraminal, even also revision surgery. Uh, I don't know, I don't want to tell about surgical technique now, just to talk about the cap capacity and possibility of the UV, UV surgery. Uh, how is it possible? Uh, in early period of, of endoscopic spine surgery, there are many, many limitations to solve this problem. Limited view, and instrument migration and sequestration, extra primary disc. Even for expert endoscopic surgeon, that is a problem. And every surgeon can be cannot be expert because of long learning curve, some difficulties. So simply endoscopic surgery is not easy at that time. Uh, I want to tell about UV, UV technique. This is very simple and very similar to microscope. The merit of UV is most familiar to spine surgeon. Anatomy is the same as open microsurgery. We can use all instruments without limitations. More clean and more safe. More benefit to patients, minimal incision, less back pain, short admission days. So I think that the UV and micro discectomy is almost the same as third instrument anatomy and surgical results. But accuracy and safety is different. This is my personal opinion. Left side picture shows the UV view, right side picture shows the microscopic views. UV view is more clean compared to microscopic views. This means clean view makes a surgery more safe and easy. Also, expandability of UV technique is very wide. In most cases of lumbar disc disease can be treated by UV. I will show this in the next slide case review. In addition, herniated disc disease, uh, also spin spinal stenosis are good indication of UV surgery. Okay, I will show five cases. First is the central huge disc. Second is on migration. Third is down migration. First is the extra foraminal uh, pseudocyst that is similar to this culture. And last case is the revision surgery. Okay, first case is the central huge disc herniation. The MRI shows the L3 four level ruptured disc and compressed the whole dura massively in the axial view. 
This patient had a L45 fusion surgery before. So uh, in these cases, there are some additions because of the previous surgery. So the targeting point is very important. All, all cases in spine surgery for the disc removal, I think targeting is very important. Okay. Approach is the ipsilateral view uh, to L3-4 levels uh, using some fan field and this is the self retractor. I like this. I prefer use this instrument. It's, this is very useful without any assistance. So just to moving and rounding and breathing control with the astrocares and slightly move to the dura to medially, we can see the rupture disc portions. So same way as micro discectomy, but small laminectomy and easy to find the disc rupture. So uh, after removing the disc, huge disc central disc, the only check the dura pulsation. I think that's enough to finish the surgery. So next MRI, next slide is show the after surgery. So the central huge disc is removed and patient symptom is gone. Next case is the on migration. The previous MRI shows the big up migration disc left side, L45 levels. Coronal view shows the well migrated disc portions, the left side is up to the, it's kind of kinking in the axilla area. So, so for this patient, I use two techniques combined. The first one is I make uh, some small laminectomy to upper margin of the airport laminar area with UV technique and the small remove the ligament problem and make her some small hole. And second technique is I changed the scope to the PLD scope. And using PLD scope, I found the edge of the rupture disc and slightly move the punch and I can remove the whole disc. You can see the big disc coming out in the video clip. So next slide shows the disc, rupture disc and the post op MRI shows the removed disc and the the uh, canal is very wide in a space. The patient discharged the same day without pain. And next case is down migrations. Uh, down my, this previous MRI, pre-OP MRI shows the L3-4 level down migration disc and left side. So this is same way. I always focus on the targeting. Targeting is very important. On migration and down migration, just to remove the the, you know, the ruptured portion laminectomy is needed to find the disc. So I don't remove the whole ligament problem. I don't remove the whole many merch laminectomy. So only just remove the that portion. So this is remove the upper portion of the air pore laminar and just retract the dura area. And same way to find the rupture disc, just using the pen field and make her some space to can use the self detractor. So this is the my technique. I don't remove many many uh, soft tissue or lamina area. So after surgery. We can see the remove the disc and patient's symptom is gone. And next case is a little interesting. Now see the previous OP MRI. When I saw this image, I usually suspect disc rupture extra foraminal areas. 
T, but the T1 and T2 image shows the low signal, both. So something strange, something different. Usually the this structure is different, T1 and T2, but this patient shows the some same same in test in the T1 and T2 MRI. So I check the CT scan also, and I suspect this is not this that is kind of the cyst or something like that. I I did UV surgery with air containing cyst impression. This is the video clip. I did paraspinal approach. You can see the beside the L5 root, I found the air containing sugar cyst. You can see the air bubbles. Imagine if you do this surgery with tubular open or open surgery, uh, you can, but cannot see the, this beautiful view, very clean views. And the difference, microscope and endoscope is after surgery, we can confirm the disc is removed whole. So the finishing the surgery is very easy and we can check the decompress the nerve root like that. So after surgery, we can see the remove the cyst right, right side, left side of the extrapulmonary area. Last case is the recurrent disc herniation in L45 level and down migration. Uh, this patient uh, have had a surgery before, uh, right L5 hemilaminopathy mistake. This is the same way if selector approach. Usually for the revision cases, targeting is more important, I think. Uh, sometimes we can you know, distinguish what is the root or what is the disc or what is the capsule. Very difficult to distinguish the nerve and soft tissues. So I recommend don't touch the soft tissue too much and find the border of the L5 upper lamina, lateral side, because of the there is severe audition. Find the rupture disc set and remove. The revision surgery takes a more time, but if you carefully attention to the you know, anatomical situation, you can find the disc and remove without any injury to the nerve. So this is the post-operation MRI. Uh, here is the, some tips for UV surgery for the beginners. I think UV is how uh, UV, is, UV is very good, good tool for the disc disease. But this, my tip is to careful review the patient information first and decide the approach. It's up to the surgeon's choice, if central, contractor, or paraspinal. And accurate targeting is very important. Minimal bony resection and minimal injury to the soft tissue and bleeding control. So I think our microscope disectomy and endoscope disectomy is not different, but I think every spine surgeon can do endoscopic surgery for the disc disease. Uh, conclusion is UV is the powerful surgical method for the treatment of herniated disc disease. Uh, can treat all kinds of disc disease. And it is easier and more safe than microscope. And show same anatomy as microscope. So it is familiar to spine surgeon. That means easy to run. I think endoscope surgery, including UV or BES, will be standard treatment for the spine surgery. Thank you for your attention.